right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Sally Wagner, who is over in Tampa Bay in Florida. How are you doing, Sally? Fabulous. How are you? I'm fantastic. And Sally is a best selling author, speaker, uh, and she is your life consultant and alchemist guiding you to identify and get rid of habits and behaviors that are that you that you keep trying to change fears and phobias that drain your power and limiting beliefs and decisions that no longer move you in the right direction of your goals. It's fantastic stuff. And what we're going to talk about today is building resi resilience with msg mindset skill set and get off your asset okay so let's get let's get straight into it uh, into it sally explain this msg to me okay so uh as you said msg is mindset skill set get off your asset and those three concepts really encapsulate a lot of very important coaching principles and life principles uh, it all starts with mindset, how we perceive ourselves and the world around us. And uh, sometimes we need a new skill set to have the right mindset because we are not always taught to have a mindset that is going to move us forward. Uh, we have a lot of limiting beliefs and decisions, all that negative talk that goes on in our heads that tells us that we can't do this or we shouldn't do that. So we have to overcome that with mindset. And as I said, sometimes we need new skills to do that. Uh, sometimes we need new skills uh, to build in a skill set, a stack, so that we can have multiple complementary skills to do what we want in life. A big skill mm. is taking action. And that's where the G parts get, uh, get off your <laughs> ass that, you know? Yeah. Uh, how many procrastinators do we know? Uh, sometimes that's uh, me, right? I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special skill sometimes to take action. And yet yes. all three of those things are necessary if we want to achieve what we want in life. Yeah. So going back to mindset, uh, let's start with mindset, because I, there's a lot of talk about mindset and you hear it everywhere. Like, yes. uh, but but I still think that people don't really understand how to change their mindset or what what mindset really actually means yes. uh, at least that's my impression what do you think absolutely you're right uh, mindset is not just thinking happy thoughts like peter pan right there's a yep. lot of work involved in it uh, and it, the first step is being mindful of what are we thinking what is our mindset because as I said, we have a lot of that negative thought that is so much in the background, we don't even notice it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I call it mind apps. You know, it runs in the background. It's like an app on your phone or other device and, and it drains the battery and it slows things down and it has competing purposes. And so we have that talk going on. We need to become aware of it in order to change it. So become aware of your thoughts, understand what feelings come from those thoughts, understand what actions come from those feelings, what results you get as a result of those actions, and then those results are gonna reinforce those thoughts. So we have to interrupt the cycle to make real change in our lives. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree. And I think it's, it's, it's increasingly hard, I think, for people because there is, as you said, there's the self-talk and I think they, psychology today or something said it was like 70 percent or more of our daily self-talk is negative yeah. but it's not just that then but now we've added into the mix all this other stuff social media all stuff just coming at us non-stop and to be mindful you have to take time out from this stuff and i think that's the problem is that the people aren't taking time out they're not spending any time with themselves because they're just allowing all of this noise to overwhelm them absolutely and, and it's uh, numbing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it, because we are overwhelmed. We want to be numbed. Uh, it's hard work to be mindful. And so it's that vicious cycle that just pulls us more into the numbing activities of social media and binge purge behaviors with, you know, watching Netflix or whatever your favorite streaming service is. Yeah, um, yeah we get caught in that trap so easily. 
Yeah, and and uh, and the the term I heard recently, what was it? The zombie scrolling is when people are yeah. on their device devices like this, and they're just going like scroll, 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 yeah. for, uh, and then days have gone by. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's like we're already in the zombie apocalypse. We just don't know it. <laughs> exactly. Um. So then you talk about so if if people can take time out and actually be mindful and start to. Uh, start to actually be conscious of their thought patterns and as you said the feelings that come from those thought patterns what's the next step in actually trying to address it because recognizing it is is a fantastic first step but as you said mm -hmm. not very many people have the skills then or understand what it takes to go to the next level right so uh, we want to interrupt that cycle and if we're having those negative thoughts, the, the negative talk that we're constantly bombarding ourselves with, we want to change that. And so that's that's hard, right? Because we have all these patterns and programming uh, that revolve around our self-worth and uh, how deserving we are. And so it's not, as I said, not just as simple as thinking happy thoughts. However, it is possible to interrupt the cycle ask yourself is this true is what i'm telling myself true because it's it's not what we don't know that holds us back it's what we do know that's not true that holds us back uh, so here's my favorite example uh, real life from my real life um, i have to be perfect that there's that self-talk i have to be perfect right I, and so what does that do that's going to hold me back from doing things that I know mm -hmm. I'm not going to be perfect at. So you see how it changes mm -hmm. my life. The, the way to interrupt that is to ask myself, do I really have to be perfect? Why? Why do I have to be perfect? And once I start to examine those thoughts and beliefs, I can change them. I can reframe the story I'm telling myself. And reframing is a huge skill. Yeah, no, I know. I love that. That's 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 fantastic because, yeah, it, it, recognizing the results of the behaviors is is mm -hmm. so critical. As you said, you know, perfectionism, unfortunately, perfectionism often prevents you from doing anything. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's sometimes it's a great way of avoiding ever putting yourself out there because if it's not perfect, you can't do it. Then you're not you're not leaving yourself open for any uh, any scrutiny. Uh, and I think people have lots of these types of things, whether it's perfectionism, whether it's fear yeah. of failure, fear of success was another one. Yes. Um, all of those things that you have to isolate them. And as you said, figure out how do they make you feel? And then you suddenly realize, wow, I'm going around making myself feel lousy on a regular basis. Exactly. And, and it's a choice, you know, I can change the messages I'm telling myself. Um, it's it's not going to happen instantly. Uh, it is some hard work, and yet I can do it. You know, we have that snarky six year old in our subconscious that's constantly telling us things, and and you know, affirmations are fabulous. But I can affirm things all day, and the snarky <laughs> six year old is saying, "Yeah, right. You wish mm -hmm. uh, in your dreams, or you know, those kinds of things." And so there are ways that we can get around that. Kind of, kind of cut the snarkiness out of the process, so that we we assign our subconscious a task to find positive things to focus on. Yeah, that's fascinating. What you just said there is assign uh, assign our brain uh, things to to find things to to focus positively on, because I think it, I think a lot of people think everything comes from your brain. You can't tell your brain anything. It actually goes in the opposite direction. But but you do. You can you can retrain your brain, and I think that's yeah. the most fascinating part. And it sounds it sounds difficult and it sounds like you know, wow that's taking on a lot to try and do that but if simple steps simple steps you can retrain your brain pretty quickly absolutely and that's where the resilience part comes in right it's it mm -hmm. is a very simple process uh it can sound overwhelming but steady does it right steady wins the race and if we have a system and a process in place every day to take steps in the right direction and so, uh, for example, incorporate the new thoughts into your existing activities. So every time you brush your teeth, think something that counteracts that negative talk, think something positive. Uh, every time you brush your hair or shampoo or open the refrigerator door or 
pick up your car keys, things that we do every single day. When we tie the, the changed thought to that activity, we're going to be able to reinforce it more quickly. Yeah, I know, absolutely. And I think the other part that I think a lot of people overlook today is, is how do you start your day? Like, what do you what do you input into your head? Like, do you wake yeah. up in the morning? Do you grab your phone? Do you start looking at news sites? And let's face it, news sites don't give you news <laughs> anymore. They provoke you. That's what they're there yes. to do, provoke you. Yes. Whatever side of the spectrum you're on, don't care. It's all the same. Right. Um, or or you go on social media and then you start going, oh, well, look at Sally seems to be doing really well for herself. My yeah. life sucks in comparison. Yeah. And before you know it, you haven't even started your work day, but you're in a bad space already. Absolutely. That does happen. And so my suggestion is start the night before and go ahead and plan the day you're going to have the next day. And so that's what I do. Uh, the night before I say, you know, tomorrow I'm going to have a fabulous day that's filled with joy and adventure and whatever I want my day to be. Right. And then when I wake up, I've already planted that seed for a day that's full of joy and adventure and excitement and fun and family and whatever. Um, but it starts with those intentions that we express and I suggest do it the, the day before at bedtime, then you wake up to it and then you just continue in that vein for the rest of the day. Yeah, no, absolutely. And maybe ration your, ration your social media and your news and everything. I always say like, listen, generally speaking, if there's a meteor headed towards our house, I'm sure one of the neighbors will tell me so I can go without news and it's not really going to affect my life that much. Um, yeah. the, the thing you mentioned earlier was, um, you know, resilience. And I, and I think that's such an it's important part yes. because how do you how do you advise or help people when, OK, they start off on the process and maybe they get enthusiastic and they adopt it and they're working, but then they hit a they hit a speed bump, which is inevitable. Mm -hmm. yeah. That will often just put people right back to square one. So how do you yeah. help them like just take it as a speed bump, say, oh, speed bump and move yeah. on. And, and that's where the resilience comes in. That's where the concept of this is part of my daily activity, right? I have a system and a process for what I do every day, just like I brush my teeth every day. And I, mm -hmm. you know, do all those kinds of things every day. This is just part of that system. And there are going to be speed bumps and detours. And just think that when the Apollo projects were going to the moon, they were off course 97% of the time mm. and mm -hmm. they still made it to the moon and back. So we can tolerate a little bit of off course in our own lives. And that's where the mindfulness comes in so that you have constant course correction, uh, no judgment, right? It doesn't mean there's a failure. It doesn't mean anything. It's just mm -hmm. feedback. And yeah. we can course correct as we go on every single day. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Um, as you said, yeah, it's not it's not failure. It's it's feedback. And I guess the other part of it, too, and this is another trait, human human nature trait, unfortunately, is we will focus more on the speed bump than we will on all of the progress we've made. And I think that's a really important part is is not not looking back with regret or anything, but looking back occasionally to see how far you've come and to realize that you're making progress because I, I think that's a key part because otherwise you just focus on speed bumps and you think oh wow well that that didn't work and instead of looking at all that maybe you've made a massive amount of progress absolutely and that's part of the reframe that we talked about earlier you mm -hmm. know failure is just part of the system and it's it's a tool it's not an outcome and when mm -hmm. we look at it in that way, when we reframe it, then we look at it in a way that it has more utility for us individually. And there's no judgment. There's no, uh, it, you know, oh, woe is me. I'm a horrible person. I should never have done this. You know, we avoid all that when we look at it as simply feedback. Yeah. And I think the, the other part, too, is that obviously this is a journey you're going on, you know, yourself internally and all of that. However, you still operate in some level of a community, you know, whether it's your family and your friends. Revenue. So I think part of what you need to do also is to examine the people you surround yourself with. Yes. And it, do they make you feel good? Do they support you? And and if they don't, why why are you maintaining the, that person? Because they're serving some kind of purpose for you because you're you're maintaining them within your circle, even though they don't make you feel good. Absolutely. And community, you brought that word up. I love it. That is part of resilience. 
people who have strong community are uh, much more successful in the things that they determine to accomplish for themselves. And community can include your friends, your family, your social groups, all of those kinds of things. Giving back to your community is part of strengthening that and building resilience. Yeah, no, absolutely. And 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 your community doesn't have to be a massive community. It can be no. it can be a small group of people as long as it's 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 positive. It allows you to do positive things. It's positively, you know, affirming. And, and all of that. And I, that's why I just think, again, I come back to we live in a culture today because of social media and all of these things where people now are measuring their self-worth in the number, in numbers, right? quantity, right. followers, comments, likes, all of this. Whereas the real, whereas the real impact on your life is, is those few cherished people who can really, who really understand you and really want the best for you. Absolutely. And, and that's another form of resilience, right? Uh, do we look for others for our sense of worth and our sense of self? Or are we looking at what we are giving to others, giving to our community, giving to our family and our friends and ourselves? You know, mm -hmm. that's an important part of community. You, you have to be the center of it, not in uh, an ego way, but sure. just in terms of it, you know, we, we treat people, we, we teach people how to treat us. And if we're not treating ourselves well, then other people are going to see that. And that's how they're going to treat us in turn. So once we start focusing on ourselves in terms of building resilience and self-care and those kinds of things, other people will notice and they'll treat us that way too. Yeah, you know, that's a really, that's a really important point that you just made there is that how we think about ourselves and how we project ourselves is how other people perceive us so you're right if i'm if i feel negative if i'm down on myself if i'm all of these things um that's what's going to project and that's how people are going to say oh yeah you know treat me like treat me like that and i think that's such an important point that people don't understand is other people pick up on what you think and project about yourself so you have you have a certain amount of control over how they perceive you, not total control, clearly, but you have a certain amount. And I'm not sure if everybody realizes that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and we've all had the experience of, you know, being in a room and feeling awkward and, you know, alien as if we didn't belong. And and then we've been in other situations where we feel like we own the room and we've seen other people do that as well. It, and it's not necessarily you know, anything about the room, it's really more about us and how we present ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And then just just one last thing. Um, the last part of this is get up, get off your asset, right? And yes. so how do you encourage, because I mean, maybe people listen to this say, oh, yeah, it sounds great. I, I need to do stuff like this. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they don't actually get up off their asset. Right. And do it. So how right. do you encourage yeah. people to actually take take that first step? So the, the first step I would suggest is write it down. Whatever it is you want to achieve, write it down. When we write it down, then we are 56% more likely to achieve it. The next step is have your action steps. We talked about a system and a process, right? Something that we're going to do every mm -hmm. day, readily and willingly and happily every day. And when you do that, then you're 64% more likely to achieve your goals. And then the third step is share your goals with an accountability partner, somebody in your community, right? And when you share your goals and report weekly on your progress, you have a 76% rate of success. So those three simple steps can get you into action. Yeah, no, I love the I love the accountability partner piece because, you know, we're fantastic at making plans ourselves, but we're also fantastic at coming up with excuses to ourselves yeah. why we couldn't do it. So an accountability partner is is absolutely critical, I think. And and some yeah. and just and obviously you just need to pick them wisely. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, accountability, we, we can't hold ourselves accountable, yeah. right? It has to be a third party to do it. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic, Sally. All of Sally's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So multiple initiatives. I'm a lawyer and a real estate broker, have a couple of businesses on that side. 
And you mentioned I'm a life coach, a life alchemist, and I use EFT, uh, emotional freedom techniques, neuro-linguistic programming, and trauma-aware modalities to really help people achieve the results that they choose for their lives. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Listen, Sally, this has been fantastic. Great information. I would encourage people to go check out Sally's work. Remember today, today's a good day to start, isn't it? It's a good day to start on, on changing your changing yourself for the better. Uh, listen, thanks again, Sally. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.